Closet. My name is Brittany. Today we're going to talk about Theodore Sturgeon, the guy who wrote the episode Shore Leave in a Muck Time. And then we're going to talk about a scene from Bread and Circuses, which if you possess ovaries, will cause them to combust. And of course we're going to fit in time for a yay 60s moment because this show just would not be the same without a guy dressed up as a giant lizard. Now I know I'm not sitting down at a table or anything fancy like that, but that's because tables are for pansies and people with money. Don't worry, I can prove Kirk and Spock wanted to make babies without the use of a chair because I'm that good and they're that gay. Bisexual. Whatever, they're in love. For this segment, I've got someone to help me out. You might recognize him from episode 6 of The Ship's Closet, which was posted one, two decades ago, somewhere in the 90s. Everybody say hi to Eddie. He's been pretty busy since he last appeared, actually. He graduated from Princeton, as you can see. And he's been absolutely insufferable about it since then. Like, seriously, you cannot talk to this thing. But I brought him on the show because everything's more legit when you're holding a coffee mug, especially when that coffee mug has an Ivy League education. Theodore Sturgeon. He was a science fiction writer back in the day, and he wrote the episodes Shore Leave and Amok Time, which I told you about two seconds ago. I'm bringing him up today to specifically address the skeptics who say that Amok Time and Shore Leave were not gay at all, and it's just fangirls confusing wishful thinking for reality, and blah blah blah, we've all heard the arguments a thousand times. But see, our Teddy was known for another work before Star Trek. It was called The World Well Lost, and it was a short story, science fiction, published in 1953, about homosexuality. But there's more. I will summarize The World Well Lost for you now, and if you think I'm making any of this up, feel free to consult any part of the internet you feel is legitimate. The World Well Lost takes place in the future, where two aliens from the race Durbanu land on Earth. Now, instead of freaking the hell out, like Earth people usually do in this situation, they see how loving and caring and beautiful and intimate that these aliens are with each other, and they just kind of fall in love with them. They even nicknamed them the Loverbirds, for crying out loud. But there's a slight problem. When the Durbanu government contacts Earth and it's like, yeah, we kind of need them back, they're criminals. If you could just send them on over, that would be awesome. And the Earth, not wanting to make waves with aliens, obviously, it's like, yeah, sure, we'll do it, no problem. We'll send them on over, we'll get a couple of our best guys on it. And the people they get to escort the Durbanu back to their home world are Roots and Grunty. Roots and Grunty. Roots is the talkative, womanizing, egotistical captain, and Grunty is the tall, lumbering, quiet, poetic second in command. Their personalities are very different, but that hasn't stopped them from earning a wonderful reputation in space travel circles for being so reliable, having great teamwork, and being so incredibly efficient. They like each other so much that they refuse to work with anyone else. So they get in their spaceship, and they go off to take the Dubanu back to their home planet. Now the thing about their spaceship is that they have an FTL propulsion system, which is, you know, they use it for space jumps, essentially. But the downside is, is that it can have an effect on the human nervous system. It kind of depends on who, uh, on who you are. It affects some people, it doesn't affect other people. It's just kind of a crapshoot. Roots is heavily affected. He's got to sleep it off after every single jump. Grunty, kind of not affected. Can kind of just hang out and be groovy and be conscious. So after each FDL jump, Roots is out, Grunty's awake, and the Loverbirds aren't even affected because they're aliens, they're not even human. So after the first jump on the way to the Debrano home homeworld, Grunty, who's the only one awake, figures out that not only are the Loverbirds telepathic, but they've figured out Grunty's deep dark secret that the readers aren't supposed to have picked up on yet. Grunty is so protective of this secret that he's about to kill the Loverbirds when the Loverbirds are like, no, 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 no. Here are some pictures. Let's draw you some pictures before you kill us. Just look at the pictures. And so Grunty looks at the pictures and figures out that these two aliens 
that have been loved and adored by everyone on earth for being so beautiful together are both male. So essentially, the Loverbirds turned everyone on Earth into surprise slash fans. Grunty realizes this, and what does he do? He puts them in one of the escape pods and lets them go. And then Roots wakes up, and he's totally pissed off because he thinks that Grunty has sabotaged the entire freaking mission. And Grunty's like, no, 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 wait, look at these pictures. They're queer. And then Roots gets even more pissed off, saying that he would have killed the Loverbirds had he known. And then he makes some weird assumption that, oh, well, then Grunty, you must have set them free to avoid any awful consequences should people find out that these were both dudes. And Grunty's like, sure. Let's go with that. Sounds great. I'm all for it. And so when they get to their Durbanu home world, okay, they get there and they're like, well, they died. They died on the way here. Died in transit. They're totally dead. Your fugitives are dead. Don't ask to see the bodies. We're out. And they leave. And they head back to Earth. And the final scene is after they have made the jump, the FTL jump, on their way home. Roots is out. And Grunty admires him. And this is the part where the reader is supposed to pick up on the fact that Grunty is gay and has a heart on for his captain. But something tells me that you picked up on that a little before you were supposed to. Thus endeth the world well lost. The similarities between Kirk and Spock and Roots and Grunty are all pretty obvious. I don't need to go into them here. But what is interesting is how Theodore Sturgeon apparently had a track record for depicting homosexuals in a sensitive light and subverting homosexuality with the use of the friendship label. I mean, he even alludes to Grunty's sexuality in the beginning, saying that the only way to destroy their friendship would be to explain it to Roots. This guy knows how to do homoerotic subtext. He was doing this shit before Roddenberry. Now, why Roddenberry would hire a writer known for a story about homosexuality between a womanizing captain and a quiet first officer, we don't really have any idea. But if you ever figure out that big mystery, please let me know.